guys, this is Austin. And John. And welcome to another episode of the Meat Justics podcast. I'm going to start talking really fast because we have something in front of us that's very important. I'm just going to go. Ooh, okay. We have it. steak, which is always a good reason for a podcast. I know it's going to be a good time. Oh, look at that. It looks delicious. It is such a perfect cook. Um, you talk. I'm going to actually grab my phone. I got to take a picture of that. Cool. While we've been sitting here waiting to get ready, John's going to blame Patrick and Patrick's going to blame John. <laughs> but all I know is I'm sitting here in the middle of the two of them. Well, not literally in the middle of them, but um, and I'm just smelling the steak and it is amazing. Um, right before we went on too, I was like, John, what are, what are we even doing with this today? Because I don't remember. Do you remember <laughs> what is special about this steak now? No, still I, no. Huh. We, I, I know we talked about we needed to do something else and something additional with steak, but so there, there's been a night since since we then. last talked, so I don't remember what we did. Uh, so Tex sent me a a link to this article about one company, Holy Grail Steaks, becoming like the sole um, source of what they're calling carrot finished. Okay, so did a bunch of reading up on that. Um, it does make sense. I mean, carrots are very similar to corn and feed in, uh, carbohydrates. I mean, it's a real carb heavy veggie. That's probably why it's the only vegetable that I really love. <laughs> um, so what they do with these cows is instead of sending them to a feedlot, they keep them there at the ranch and just ship in tons of carrots. And this place is in California. It's right next to Bolt House Farms. You know all those drinks? Yeah. And them, they and somebody else in that area make produce over a million pounds of carrots a day. That's so, insane. I know. They take the uh, like the extra or like the refuse or whatever. All right. So no more talking. Um, these steaks were available online. We're going to talk about how they shipped them to us. Tenderness is perfect. Um, taste is great. I mean, they were nicely marbled. I, I did not go for the real expensive ones. Um, they were nicely marbled, not insanely, but nicely. Uh, these are ribeyes, and that was the cap that I think we both just took a bite out of. So that is going to be the most tender part of the steak, uh, but doesn't matter. With how good that was, it was like tender enough that... I could almost chew it like with my tongue, not even my teeth. So as always, we reverse seared this. We put it in uh, the main box of our woodwind smoker. They're thick steaks. So I set it at 225 and I left them in there until they were about 100, not about, until they were 118 degrees. And then, then I kicked on the sear box on the side and I just finished them up on that. Right as I was putting them on, I sprayed them with just a little bit of this duck fat and re-seasoned them. Uh, with the ultimate steak and roast rub. But Patrick, um, you're going to want to come taste this. I, mean, I almost wonder, and I was worried about there being like a flavor to it. Because mm -hmm. I have I don't know if it's legit or not, but I've always heard like if you eat enough of like something, you could like, it's probably an old wives tale, but you could change colors type of thing. Is, is anything like that, you eat enough of something, could it actually affect you and change something? So if a cow is eating enough carrots, could the cow have an, could something impact its flavor, its they, make, makeup and whatnot? They'd just be Walton's cows, nice and orange. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I don't want to be hyperbolic here. Like I'm trying to pull back but from a tenderness aspect from how it cooked the butchering of it was obviously top notch um so this is holy grail steak company we'll kind of ignore the uh sacrilegious aspects yeah. of that um but they they're on to something for sure so there's a lot I like about what they've done here. One of the main things I really like is they keep the cows at their ranch. They're not sending them off to feedlots right before slaughter. And apparently, when the cows see the 
truck coming with like the carrot refuse, they go wild. Yeah. Like they get all excited for it to come. So they're obviously enjoying themselves. I know this is woo woo, but I wonder if that translates into a better tasting cut of meat. Like, you know, the whole thing with happy cows or laughing cow, the cheese company. They say happy cows make better cheese. Mm. Never heard that? No. Yeah. Uh -uh. Um, but that is a darn good cut of steak. I mean, in, in theory, there could be some principle behind that that is accurate to a degree. Like that's why, like when you're when you're in the middle of slaughter and processing, you don't want to uh, elevate the anxiety. Yeah, it's or testosterone have too much for movement. hogs. Yep. Yeah. If 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 an animal gets too worked up and excited before slaughter, it's going to ruin the quality of the meat. Um, so if if they're staying happy, I mean, in theory, it's going to make for a better better product. Yeah. All right, we're back. We left my steak out because I plan on continuing eating that as we oh, go. You were willing to share your mine steak with someone will else. Will be shared. Uh, <laughs> no, honestly, I just there's a couple people I want to get their opinions on that. See if they're of a similar mind or if I'm being hyperbolic. I would say I was going to eat a bunch more, but as we were sitting here tasting it, uh, I immediately started running through my head. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go by the store on the way home and get steak and I'm cooking steak tonight. Yeah. Uh, cause that, and now what I get from the store is probably not going to be the same as that, but still now I'm just like, I, I need more. And if I ate that whole thing, I'm going to ruin my dinner. Yes, so. you will. That is a, a hefty cut. Um, where do you get your steak from? Wherever. Okay. As long as it looks okay. Um, I, yeah, I shouldn't say all this because i don't buy all of my meat from the sources that i should mm -hmm. um but the other day i had i had never bought like meat from target before um okay i'm for some reason i have in my mind that no target meat no not gonna do it um i can but, give you many reasons to think that yeah i i, I still think that I mean, it's going to be a better option to buy meat from somewhere else, especially a local small processor. Right. But my wife and I, we wanted steak and it was like the only way we were going to get something at the moment. And so I was like, Ugh. I'll look. I looked through every steak that they had and like I had a very hard time picking something out that I was like, oh, yeah, I'll eat that. I finally found a couple and I'm like, oh, OK, I'll. I'll do it. I won't. I bought ground beef, just ground beef from Target once, and I'll never buy it again. It was junk. Like, they do not have a good reputation, nor, and that's deserved for steak as, or meat, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if you need, your wife needs some sort of toiletry or yeah. makeup brush, sure, great. But other than that, Target is not on my normal shopping list in in the moment some steak was better than no steak so absolutely will happen um i was at sam's like a week ago you know how i was on my huge like shrimp scampi yeah so i cured myself of that by buying this big huge bag of like assorted seafood and trying to make a like a scampi with that and that was crap i mean it was just like i was the octopus, the little hunks of it were like <laughs> so hard. The calamari was not good. The only thing that was okay was like they had these little tiny shrimp and those were pretty good. Um, and then they had the crab legs chunked up in the little pieces and it was very disappointing. Just not as good as imitation crab for you? No, imitation crab way better. <laughs> way many, many times better. All right. So huge success on this oh, yeah. i love it definitely recommend them uh it's holy grail steak company you can find them just by searching that uh for shipping we just ordered two steaks they sent us that cool insulated bag inside a box with more insulation and another bag of dry ice in that yeah but how much did we pay for one steak two steaks okay i yeah i know we bought two but mm -hmm. Per steak, how much did it come oh, out you're not, to be? You don't need to worry about I'm that. I'm guessing it was like 50 bucks a steak. No. No, I mean, it was 
relatively close to that, but not that close to that. Okay. It was, I think, 32 or 34. Okay. So, so in reality, I mean, we still paid three times as much as we should have current prices for steak. I mean, if a, well, I don't know, these were big steaks. So it was over a pound. They, oh, yeah. Those were say, monsters. Norm, were thick. Normally, if you have a decent, decent thickness on a steak, you're going to get about a pound of meat. So you're going to pay 11, 12 bucks a pound ish. Right. And all the time creeping up. Oh, yeah. So uh, I read an article about them, and apparently it's like some way Wolfgang Puck is involved with it, or he uses just them now for all of his stakes. I mean, there is a reason that they're starting to get some buzz about this. It was really good. It's unfortunate we're, we're giving them all this publicity and they're not a sponsor. We don't, Walton's is our only sponsor. Yeah, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, we could have a steak sponsor. Oh, and, and just this could become a regular thing. Every like we episode, eat steak, eat a steak on every podcast. Yeah. It would be super cheap. We'll give them all the publicity we possibly can for <laughs> two of these steaks a week. All right. So move. Oh, no, no, no. Quick. I want to go over a couple other things. Um, these are just bullet points from their website. It was humanely raised higher in B12 than a normal steak b12 a lot of people oh. or some people call it like the the happy um supplement so it has like positive effects on your mood so again i'm wondering if that transfers from them being happier cows uh, it's low in saturated fat non-gmo uh, hormone and antibiotic free now this kind of rolls into the other article we were talking about. Uh, they're doing the first of its kind study on cattle and the micro RNA in them and how that affects our health. Mm -hmm. So basically, they've got this study going that's broken up into three parts. How the diet that they feed the cow affects the cow. How that changes the cow's our microRNA. And then how us eating those cows that have been specially fed changes our microDNA. Mm -hmm. So DNA um, is responsible for recreating proteins needed in our body, right? Uh, if you feed it junk, it's going to be harder for that to produce what it's wanting to produce. It's, it's going to be harder for it to do its job. I mean, that makes sense, obviously. Um, it's probably way more complex than that. That is the idiot's guide <laughs> to, to how that is. Um, but anything that's meat and health related always piques my interest. There's a lot of times I'll try to read some of these more scientific articles and I just give up. Because I'm a, this isn't interesting, and b, I'm not understanding what they're talking about. Um, but this one was actually written fairly well, uh, so we will try to go ahead and post the link to that in the the description. I I thought it was really interesting, and one of the other things in it that caught my eye was its association with tenderness, mm. um, and that's where I found interest, um, and. Everyone out there can call me crazy, and John, you can call me crazy too, but um, it, it was talking about grass-fed versus like grain-fed, and I'd really like something, like a study to come out and say, grain-fed is better for you and is more tender and tastes better than grass-fed. Two of those three things are true, there's no question. Uh, the tenderness and the taste better of non grass fed or grass finished is a, a regular steak is way better than a grass fed now i would i think so but i i i've heard a lot of people over the years and in my mind they're people that don't always know what they're talking about sure but they're like oh i just i won't eat anything but grass fed that's what tastes the best i'm like you're crazy they are you're crazy they don't probably know can't tell the difference but the biggest thing probably motivating people to say that is the trendiness of it. 
Yeah. Like that is trendy, grass fed. True. It does not produce as good a, a taste. It's not as tender. Um, sorry. But long, yeah. as long as we're in agreement on that, yep. I'm happy. So, but this is a cool study that we will try to follow um, throughout its life as it goes. We will try to to get with that. <laughs> get with that. Get with that. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing I don't make my living speaking because I'd be poor. <laughs> yeah, it's not like your job requires you to be in front of a camera and talk. Not at all. So we've got. The exact opposite of this end. Have you ever heard of the website Epicurious? Yes, but... <laughs> so you know what I'm going to say. No, I have oh. no idea. Epicurious, which is a foodie website, self-described foodie website, they're no longer going to be posting any recipes that have beef in it. Wow. Because beef is so bad. It's just terrible. Goodness. I... That I don't I don't even understand. Like, how can you even come to that conclusion? I'm going to post nothing but beef stuff on Walton's account and tag them every time I do it. I don't know. Yeah, I knew you wouldn't let me with, do that. I, on one hand, I think it would be kind of fun. But on the other hand, you don't want something to backfire and to, like, give someone more publicity. What's going to backfire on that? The people who would get angry at us for doing that, we don't care about them. Anyways. Oh, I don't care about the anger. I just care about uh, the publicity, which would lead towards like more web traffic for someone that is doing something we don't like. I mean, is it better to ignore someone or is it better to poke fun at them like that? Oh, I would, I'd argue it's better to poke fun. It's at least more fun. It makes you feel better. Yeah, for but sure. I don't know. But you're right, Austin. We're trying to be positive, We're trying to hold on to that positive vibe from the last one. It's just another thing that's trendy. It's trendy right now to hate beef. I don't understand how that's possible, but whatever. Yeah. Um, way over exaggerated in the media on its the cow's effects on greenhouse gas. I mean, unbelievably. You would think it's like in the top five reasons for, and it's not. It's a minuscule amount. Yeah. But it's an easy uh, target because. They can't talk back? Yep. Oh, well. Uh, so this kind of made me uh, think of things in a new way. So U.S. exporters are seeking federal help with shipping challenges. So on exports, we only ever think about how hard it is to get things into the U.S. right now. But they're struggling to get things out of the U.S., yeah, um, food is a interesting deal to work with when you're talking about exports from the U.S. Um, just for for us, I mean that that does impact us sure. um, because what we have here, I mean, it's not necessarily a final edible food product, but a lot of what we sell is considered a food product, um, casing, seasonings, mm -hmm. all that stuff that's going into it, and there are a lot of restrictions on what can and can't be shipped to different areas. Um, I was actually just having a meeting earlier this week with um, a couple of our UPS reps, and they were uh, asking about what we do with some international stuff, and we were discussing it, and they they want to see us do more international just because they see it as an opportunity for them to get more business. Mm -hmm. um, but in, through, in some of those discussions, we were talking about some of the issues we've had in the past, and... Um, casings can't be shipped to certain areas especially natural hog casings mm -hmm. that's a, that's big, the one. big one even seasonings um seasonings, there's really restrictions on certain things so like if I'm, there's cheese or something in the seasoning that's the only thing i can imagine i don't know okay i don't know for sure um but even if it, if it affects a, a company like ours someone who's a much bigger international player yeah um, i'm sure they have to deal with all kinds of craziness there yeah, when I was in customer service, we used to uh, ship collagen casings down to Jamaica for one customer. Like every six months, he'd buy a ton of them. We'd ship them all together. And that was, I think, like special papers had to be included with the shipment because they were going to get checked at, at customs. Uh, have you ever been to like a, a somewhere in the Bahamas or some South American country? No. So 
the most interesting thing the first time i went or second time i went because i barely remember the first time i went um <laughs> I, I was all worried about going through customs to get into jamaica and it was literally nothing nobody looked at me they just stamped my passport and they, no one checked my bag or anything i often find like that kind of colored my mind on imports exports i tend to think like other countries don't care as much about what's coming into their country as we do. Um, I'm sure a lot of that stems from the drug trade. We're trying to prevent drugs from getting in. Yeah. Jamaica, Mexico, like none of those countries are worried about the U.S. shipping drugs to them. Right? I would imagine. One, yeah, one would think so. That would yeah. logically, I think, make I sense. I think. I don't know. But the other thing that kind of made me think on this is could part of what they're struggling with, like, we used to be able to track the container ships coming in. They'd sit in LA Harbor for like a night and then go dock. Now they're sitting for way too long. Um, is it possible that that not having those ships available as quickly is part of their export? Because they must ship, I, they ship things on the way back. They don't go back empty. Um, I mean, yeah, it's hard to get uh, ship space on anything right now. Um, whether it's coming in or out, I mean, you're going to see some of the same effects. Some areas and lanes could be better than others. Mm. It depends. But I think overall as a whole, um, I, I think there's there's issues whether you're going in or out, yeah. import or export. I'm sure. Which, by the way, we uh, uh, another one of our containers coming in of some of our Walton's branded stuff. Um, it, it's, it has been ready to ship and it has just been sitting, waiting. They, what? I, they were saying last, I heard that it was, it might sit there for three or four weeks before it even picked up. We were getting back in touch with UPS and the vendor and trying to figure out how we were going to find ship space for it. Uh, what is it? Uh, next container of our Walton's branded stuff. Okay. So like grinders and all right but we have enough stock of those to absorb a little bit of a of a space a little bit stuffers are almost here right in theory <sighs> it's another one of those things where I, I mean in the old way of doing things yeah i mean they should have been here already where they are now they should should be here any day in today's world i don't know i mean it it, it might be here tomorrow it might be here in a month that is annoying. Um, all right. Somebody sent me an article. It is National Park Service looking for volunteers to kill bison at the Grand Canyon. If if you are not watching this, my <laughs> hand is straight up in the air. I. What do you I have that would take down a bison? Uh, I got like a thirty out six sniper rifle. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, not going right down. It's pretty. It's pretty sweet. Right. It, it would at least do some damage to it. Okay. I may have some fancy rounds for it that um, could do some fun damage. I'll talk. Uh, we'll talk off camera because technically I don't think the rounds are allowed okay. anymore. Yep. Hey, they, but, I'm uh, sure they're perfect. They're fine. they're from my grandpa and oh, from a while ago, nice. so they're some legit stuff. Uh, I was seeing a video on Instagram of a bullet that not just hollow point, but hollow point with ridges all the way across. He shot it into a watermelon, and I mean, like it looked like he put a grenade in there. It was mm -hmm. awesome, absolutely awesome. It just, poof. yeah, I love blowing stuff up. But that is something I don't think they're going to have too much trouble finding volunteers for. Yeah, that seems crazy that they would even have to ask for volunteers, right? Or even that an article had to be. This must be like somebody. Some journalists heard about this. It can't be a, like the National Park Service saying, hey, can you let people know? Because they will be inundated with volunteers for that. We're, no, you didn't come. Patrick, you came to the, yes, when we went to uh, the slaughtering plant, bison, a half a bison. Like you think it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like a cow. No, it's so much bigger than a cow. It's large. They are scary animals. It says, it says here in the article that there's going to be 25 applicants that will be selected to form a pool of which 12 volunteers will be chosen. So 
if they only need 12 people, like why even go through the whole process? Just give it to you could yeah, just right. pick 12 people. Yep. Like that would not be hard. Yeah. But still pretty awesome. Uh, especially if you get to go into the Grand Canyon to hunt them. I mean, how unbelievably epic would that be? It should be like a helicopter hunt. Oh. Like they do hog hunts down in Texas. Yeah. Just but kidding. no, the hog hunts, they do it like that so they can kill as many as possible because they're just outbreeding everything else. This, I would see that more as like, a, that's more of an experience. This is, especially if you get True. to go into the Grand Canyon. I would wear a coonskin hat, <laughs> have a flintlock rifle okay. with a bayonet and Good do luck. it like a real man. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Uh, bad news on chicken. Looks like it's about to get a lot harder to get. What struck me in this more than anything else is the chicken wings. Three mm. times recently I've gone to the grocery store and had to get frozen wings instead of the ones I like for smoked wings. And now I guess I know at least some of it why. Um, the major obstacle is they're having trouble getting people to work to process them. Like people are just like, no, I'm just going to stay home and keep, I guess, probably getting some sort of benefit. Yeah. COVID benefit. That's interesting because um, like this last year through COVID, we saw a lot of the small processors get busy and pick up some of the slack some, from some of the bigger guys um, when people were searching for meat. And that's easy to do. I, I say easy, quote unquote, easy to do on like beef and pork. A lot of people do that. But when you start talking like poultry, and then even if you start getting to some more exotic type of things, there's not near as many people that do it. There are not near as many poultry processors right. out there. That is a much more consolidated yep. uh, yeah, group of people. Uh, I mean, that's partly how we've managed to keep chicken prices as down as we have over the last 40 years is specialization in both breeding, growing, and slaughtering of them yeah but uh can we tell the story about the customer of ours and emus we won't name them <clears throat> we won't name them we'll we'll go through it and, and we'll, we'll get that approved by someone else okay and... at the end of this podcast i'm going to tell that story and then it'll either be there if we get it approved or it'll get cut out if we don't it is i went when it when i first started working here you know, I'm from New York. Uh, this is a totally different scene than what I was used to at that point. I dined out on that story everywhere I went. <laughs> like if there was more than four people, I was telling that story. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So hopefully, I, I think we're okay to talk about it, but we'll wait just in case. Yeah. Oh. Nope, there it is. Uh, sorry, I knew there was one more I wanted to talk about. And this kind of has something to do with what we uh, were talking about four months ago now, where the guys got the USDA stamp yeah. and were calling things prime that weren't, which I'm sorry, is as bad as murder? Is it worse? <laughs> it might be worse. <laughs> it might be worse than murder. Um, but apparently Trump pardoned three people in a misbranding scandal from the 90s. Uh, these people were doing something a little bit different. They were raising the cattle and they were kind of like, especially with their ground beef, they were mixing in like tripe from normal cattle in with this cattle. So that's not great. I don't know that they deserved a, a pardon. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's one of the thing I one of the things I hate about politics. To me, this just sounds like a like a a favor. A favor that was done. What it, is. it wasn't like oh yeah because of some sort of injustice that was. Yep. Yeah, that, I think that's what the presidential pardon was for for an injustice. Mm -hmm. It has become a way to pay off cronies, basically like work for me, and I'll give so and so a pardon. I mean, that, I I think. That's yeah. a lot of like Trump's inner circle um, started leaving towards the end. And I think it probably had a lot to do with that. They probably had 
done whatever they were going to do to get him to pardon who they wanted to pardon. But, eh, what are you going to do? Politics is dirty business. Yep. It's all crazy. Absolutely. All right. So this is going to be released on the 10th. What's happening on the 11th, Austin? <sighs> oh, is it not happening? Well, no, it's going to happen. Oh, okay. I think it's just I always have to think about it, take a deep breath, let out a sigh, think, ponder. It's going to be okay. Wait and try to dream up what what is going to screw us up this time. But the 11th should be the website go live date. Um, so exciting. Most likely, well, we'll see. Last time we talked with um, yep. our web developers, Rosoyo, um, they said that the other company, what our platform is based off of, um, they expect to need to be down for like half a day. What? Yeah. And I'm like, that's... Why? That's crazy. So we got to do some more figuring. But in, in my thought... This is going to be like, we'll have like an hour of downtime at the most. It'll be just a switch over that we do mid afternoon, hopefully. Um, we'll see. Or may either first thing in the morning or mid afternoon. Yeah. I don't know. But why not at like 4 a.m.? Well, there's a lot. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff like people have to do. So you don't want to have people wake up at 4 a.m. everybody because if something goes wrong we also want like general support to right. be like ready to go okay and everyone doesn't wake up at 4 a.m no uh, no 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 you're 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 a rare breed john <laughs> yes that's absolutely true um but yeah so finally the culmination of way too long of work on it if you go back three months there was a <laughs> podcast where i said if we're still on this and i think i said a week from now Mm -hmm. I was going to be upset. And here we are three months later. I mean, you and I both got to the point where we're like, all right, I'm not doing anything with it at all anymore until we have some sort of date. Yeah. I I literally stopped even just kind of tweaking with it or messing with anything or looking at it oh. until I knew that we had a go live date that I was like, yeah, this, this will work because I'm just, I lost all interest in it oh, yeah. and motivation was gone. I had to do other things because too many issues and yeah i think i think we're past everything okay i think we're ready to go what's your favorite thing about the new website favorite feature or <clears throat> oh favorite feature to be honest my favorite feature may be a feature that's not out yet um i was just talking with someone this week and i'll have another discussion with them next week about implementing some some additional new payment options um doing like apple pay google pay yep. samsung pay like the whole whatever company xyz pay because all that stuff like if i can use that on another website <clears throat> it's just super fast mm. um going through checkout because i hate having to go through checkout and type in billing address shipping address all the information over and over and over um, it's literally a one click deal. So that is just top of my mind. That'll be really fun. Really cool. Um, as far as other features. Oh man. I like how the child parent configuration goes with the drop down menu. I think that's awesome. I also, it's not going to be ready to begin with, but I really think our, um, and Patrick came up with this idea also like independently of our conversation. And it's going to be the ability to have one page for snack sticks. You're going to be able to click on it, and it's going to show you all the snack stick seasonings in a drop down, all the additives you might use for a snack stick, all the casings. And then at the end, it'll have any equipment you might need for snack sticks, jerky, whatever. Just an easy one stop shop thing. Real quick, in Two minutes or less, can you explain the Apple Pay, whatever pay? Is that like on a token system? How, do, how does that protect people's information? Yeah, you basically, um, you take your credit card number and you scramble it up, you encrypt it, you hash it, you salt it, you hash it, okay. and you do all this stuff and you get a different number. That number means nothing to nobody except 
your credit card processor, basically. And so if someone was to like steal it, it's not as big of a deal. Okay. Technically, it could still maybe cause some issues, but it keeps your credit card number private. Um, but then um, it's 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 just an identifier. It's an identifier to you and your credit card. Um, makes things faster. Like I I do Google Pay on my watch. Okay. Um, and I go to like Quick Trip today. I go in there buy some drinks. I just wake up my watch and tap the deal and, and I'm good. gone. Yeah. It's 10 times faster than anything else, any credit card, um, especially check, cash, any other yeah. type of payment method. Yeah. Online, I mean, it's just a deal where all your info is saved onto like Amazon, Google, Apple, whatever, along with your credit card information, your billing details are saved there too. It's the mark of the beast. Oh, it's not the mark of the beast. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of other things that could be the mark of the beast before that. So. All right. You got anything else? I want to close this so that I can tell the story and then we can get approved to either include it or don't. I got one thing. Go. So my, I mean, my favorite thing probably about the website is just kind of overall the website, like not That's one specific feature. Answer. No, 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 no. Like the, the look of it. So like the theme, it looks more in line with the rest of our stuff. It looks more appealing. It's cleaner. It's simpler. It's it's just easier on the eyes. It's better to navigate. It, so just the user interface, I like right. better. I withdraw my objection to how you phrased that. So good. All right. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're listening, please do leave us a review. It really does help. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking out the Meat Justics podcast. To shop everything but the meat, head on over to waltonsinc.com. And to get your meat processing questions answered by experts and enthusiasts alike, head on over to our online community at meatjustics.com. Waltons, everything but the meat.